I like the idea of preparing for the future when it's easy, <laughs> right? So you think of what's the worst that can happen, okay? My business did very well because it was online during sure. COVID. Okay. It was business as usual and we had our biggest profits ever during COVID, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. We prepared Show the future. Off. No, I'm not showing I'm off teasing. here, but what I'm saying here, guys, is like, think of, you have to kind of get into Boy Scout mode here. And think, sure. What's the worst thing could happen? So let, let's say if cash went, right? What would you default to? Radio Australia, of course, it is time for the greater wealth. Uh, we've got Derek beside me, always, mate, with all the information ready to uh, educate us. What can I say, you know, uh, about all things greater and all things wealth and the combination thereof? Um, I'm just making this up on the spot, mate. I don't know what you do. Um, I don't know. You, you bring happiness to my life. Most people don't know what I do. No, no. no. <laughs> can you just describe but it to us? Isn't that a few words? The way you want it. You want to be a nominously awesome. Well, it's something it's you're not cool. achieving now. Cool. Not, not this man, anyway. You're, you're achieving jealousy. it. You're certainly not. Over you, you the, smell that, Travis. You smell that? That's the smell of jealousy. Oh, there's so much jealousy to be smoked at the moment. Let's face it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Great to have uh, everybody here. Great to have another show uh, every week. You bring a lot of information, mate. And where we, we basically talk about the combination of how, you know, look, politics and finance, how they interact. Um, and how they change our lives and the important things that we should be aware of. You know, so, what the should... greatest thing I love about Derek's show? What's that, mate? It's all the weird, random, wonderful things that we learn from him. We do every I single know. week. I know. I don't think I've ever had a show where it's not something that's like, oh shit, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's, like, oh, let's jump into it. You let's jump into it, mate. You've got the computer. You're the, you're officially in charge. We right. need a big edge radio sticker for the back so we can hide the apple. Let's do that. I've got one. I'll make that happen. Is it up there? We should just load up the back of his laptop with all our sponsors. It's a great idea. Yeah. But in the Thanks. meantime... It's my laptop. <laughs> in the meantime, can we jump into the show? that would be good too. All right. <laughs> it's my laptop. I can show what I want to. Oh, um, look... Going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> 20... Uh, I had on the weekend uh, think about where to get cash. <laughs> oh, oh, what, what a struggle. What, what ATM uh, is open these days? Which bank has closed what? And... Know. I, I can share. I've got a really and personal one on this one. I'll share this in a moment. But you go first. Go on. Whoops. I'm starting to get some numbers on what's actually going on. All right. All right. So there are 2,100 bank branches have closed in Australia since 2017, especially in regional areas. Wow. So APRA did a six-year analysis, and, yeah, it's 2,100. And uh, Mr. Trevor Oro, uh Trevero, I should say, said these numbers mark 39% reduction in the number of branches in major cities and metropolitan areas. Regional areas suffered a 34% loss. And Malcolm Roberts of the One Nation uh, Party said that that's it. So he summarised, so 30 to 40% in the last six years, he clarifies, to which Mr. Trevoro said that the number of ATMs across the country was also reducing Mm. Now, if you can't find an ATM, here's why. Metropolitan areas are suffering a 60% decline. They're just nowhere. And, I've and, and the regional areas, 50%. So there you go. It's, it's huge. Now, on top of this, mm. it gets even better. Okay. Since better that information worse? Worse, this, Since that information has been released, Bankwest, which serves 1.1 million customers across Australia, mm. uh, just announced the other week that they're going to close another three branches in WA, um, the only state where it has still has a physical presence. So it's just taken all its other ones off. off the <laughs> um, they're closing them in Armidale, Perth. Uh, they close in January 18. Maddington's going and Kununurra on the WA Northern Territory border. And then one of the majors, National, uh, of course, Bankwest is owned by CBA, Commonwealth mm -hmm, Bank. Mm -hmm. National Australia Bank has now said that it's going to close a whole bunch of them this month. About 36 branches across Victoria, Queensland, West Australia, ACT, and New South Wales. Oh, you know could, what I call but, CBA? What's that? Can't be asked. Yeah. Like, okay, they just okay. cannot be asked giving any form of customer service whatsoever. Look, in the last few months, I diced um, ANZ because I, the, the service was just appalling. I, I got rid of them because of the fact that they, the service was so poor. 
all right? Um, and the fees certainly didn't seem to change. They were exactly the same as when I did get service, and now I get none whatsoever. Now, I'm currently finding that the NAB is, is, is exactly the same. They're reducing my services, but my fees keep going up. Mm. What, what a surprise. Inflation. Oh, they inflation. Inflating inflation. their fees. Well, here's the funny thing. So if you look at why are the banks doing this, mm. What they say and what they're doing, obviously, I, I'm going, yeah, right. But they're saying with more customers choosing to bank online over the yes, phone or no by choice. video, and because fewer customers are using branches to do their banking, Bullshit. we've made the difficult decision to close some of our branches. Bullshit. That's on their website. This is when they recorded crash pro, uh, cash profits. This is NAB, at least, mm -hmm. of $7.7 billion, up 8.8%. And APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, last year shows 400 bank branches were closed across the country in the last 12 months of 30th of June. What, what this is saying to me is it's totally looking at what it wants to look at. Right. Of course. It's not considering the other reasons you have to go into the bank, right? Mm -hmm. One of the big ones is that the government's jumping up and down with the know your client rules mm -hmm. and pointing the shotgun Ooh, at the, at the yes. banks to say, you better focus on the customers. Yep. Sometimes that is difficult to do over the phone or yep. online. And typically what's happening in the banking industry is you, you do anything online, you have to get certified copies of any documentation, especially when you're dealing with companies, trusts, self-managed super fund type documentation. Mm -hmm. It can get a lot of paperwork, right? Absolutely. It's a lot easier to take the original documents down to your local branch and sit in front of somebody and say, take a copy of what you need. Yep. This is what's up to date. This mm -hmm. is what my accountant sent me or my lawyer has sent me. Um, take what you need, right? I got an answer for that. That, that administration is a really important thing. This is what opens accounts up. Okay. Sure. So there's that service. The other problem we've got here is that some banks are refusing to take cash. And it's kind of like, well, isn't that what you're meant to doing? Mm. I think what they're forgetting is the whole thing of customer service and in the aim of profits. What, what is that concept? It, it's pushing all their, their customers away. So yeah, that's where things are at at the moment. If you're finding it hard, it's almost like we're, we're, we're deeming cash too hard to deal with. We're going to charge you to deal with that. We're already charging you fees. Yeah. Well, they're, they're saying there's less people are wanting to use the uh, branches. Well, there's a good reason. I go into a branch. There's two staff. Yeah. Okay. I would. I had to go. No, I had put cash in a few weeks ago. Right. Go to, go put the cash in, and it was forty minutes. Right. Yeah. To put some cash in. You've yep. got to be kidding me. And then uh, when you get to the counter, they say, oh, there's an ATM that can do that. Spot so on. the other thing is, have you ever been to a bank when it was empty? No. Oh, I've never been yes, into a bank I where... I, I think... No. I, a few years back, yes. A few mm. years back. Yeah. That's mm. when they still had the, the majority of those 21,000 branches still mm. open. Yeah, okay. So every time I've gone to the bank... I've had a line out the door. Yes. Because people try and get service. Now, in regards to the administration side of things, documents and all that sort of stuff, you've got the tellers who are doing the copies have to set verify that that document is a true and original copy. Mm -hmm. So if they offload that to a, say, a justice of the peace to say that this is a true and original copy of the original, mm -hmm. they have no legal liability to the person who, let's say it's a, uh, a fraudulent activity and they'll try and open up a bank account legally. Okay. The, the buck falls onto the, the justice of the peace or whoever certify that document, not the bank. So they're doing that to pass the buck oh, on any responsibilities And the lawyers they run have. the earth. Well, yeah. So, yep. so, so like that joke mm. says, what are 10,000 lawyers on the bottom of an ocean? A good, good start. start. Mm. Um, so the reason they're saying less people are using the branches is because there's less things you can actually do in the branches. That's because they've forced the customer away. That's Correct. right. They've pushed them so, away. That, that's why there's less there. They've we, done this. They yeah. did that. 10, 15 years ago when people would line up and say, oh, you know, you can do this online. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, you know, you're losing your job staff member by doing that. Yes. Um, that, that yeah, it, it's it's a double-edged sword. It is. Yep. It is. So Luan's just gone to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. like, I keep telling people. Who's like, Luan? Yes. Sorry. The wife. don't know. Yes. I, I think they've been watching us long enough. So the wifey has gone to <laughs> Vietnam. Um, so in Vietnam, they don't like money transfers. Every, it's a cash economy. Okay. So we tried to take out a couple of thousand dollars for her trip to make sure she's got money for um, taxis, flights, food, bribes. I mean, um, <laughs> government interventions on things. Um, so she, you, you never travel to Vietnam without cash, like okay. a, a decent amount of cash. So we, first of all, we live in, near the Armadale area. We had to go all the way up to Maddington before we could find a branch that would actually uh, allow cash out. Sorry, Crazy. not a branch, an ATM that would an allow ATM. cash in. Jeez. Not yeah. even a branch. That's, not even a branch. For those who don't know, that's what, 25-minute drive? Uh, in traffic, about half hour. Yeah. 
So it, it's just stupid. It, it's getting to the point where it's getting harder and harder and harder just to even see cash these days. So, oh, yeah. And, like, and people don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Right. And then you yeah. lose the internet because Australia's got shit house internet. And then you can't buy anything. Or if you work in a petrol station, you're trying to do like fuel up as you work nights, and sure. then all of a sudden the bank goes, "Oh no, we're down for general maintenance for the next three hours." What are you going to do when you've got? Already I can tell you because it happened to me. Yes. I had to literally sleep in I my used car. to work in a petrol station, and right. it happened all the time. Wow. There's a thing called an IOU, so you can actually fill out an IOU, pay extra money, and come back another day or, and make the payment. Or you do what I'm finding. I'm trying to transfer funds from Bank West to yep. CBA, yeah, which are all the same bank, That's right. and then I need to move it back to another account with Bank West. Mm -hmm. Right, and it was fine getting it to CBA, but it's taken how many days to get it out of oh, CBA yeah. back to Bank West again? And it's oh, but we want you to do this online. It's like, no, no, no. Uh, and this is the thing we have to resist against this sort of it's absolute tyranny. Let's face it, it's control again of our assets and our and our finances. But you know, it it is such okay. You feel like you're one person. You're fighting against this bloody big machine. Look, what's some practical ways we can get around this, mate? Well, when you do get cash, hang on to it is one yeah. thing. Well, um, isn't it the case? Now, I could be wrong. I mean, we had this incident that came last uh, last week that a lot of Australians are hoarding Absolutely, cash, right? Yeah. Mm. And so <laughs> it may get to a point where Australians, and I've heard some kind of talk like this, mm. people starting to talk this way, which I thought was very interesting dialect, that how can we create our own economy? Yeah. Um, and seriously, they're thinking, it's, how can we do it outside of the banking system? It's already there. Mm. If people just need to understand how to do it. Yeah. So fee-for-service is a good one. So, right, you okay. do this for me, I'll do that for you. That's yeah. So remember, most people have a skill or trade or time that they can use. Sure. So let's say you want a Sparky to do something for you. So government regulations are certain things he has to do, but you can always buy to see what they want. So mm. a lot of the spikies will do things to help you do other things. So plumbers are the same. Let's say you need a brick wall out the front. Okay, no worries. You build a brick wall, I'll do something else for you. So there's there's always something that you can trade or barter with without actually getting the banks involved. Damien, will cash become rarer before, uh, therefore becoming more valuable than internet money? Ooh. Mr. Smart Money Person, mm. Derek, what's mark. your thoughts? I, I don't think it will be. Whatever the government decides to do on that, it's said because they have that thing of legal tender mm. is the big issue. So okay. what, what they accept as legal tender or issue as legal tender um, will be will be the thing that, that, that goes there. And, of course, we're the ones who vote parliament in and vote yep. them out. Yep. They're yep. there to represent our, our wishes and needs and how to run community. Okay. So Here's another question, follow on that one. Do you think cash will ever be removed as legal tender and are they allowed to do it as per the Australian Constitution? I don't know the Australian Constitution's I think le I might check legalities. That Please check that. that. I'd really well, like to know that. Sorry, I'm sending yeah. myself an email to check it. Um, you'll have to get, do some more question with notice, as I say, Travis. <laughs> um, I'll take that question on notice, thank you. <laughs> um, how many of us have been uh, sitting there watching Senate inquiries? Jeez, <laughs> we need lives, clearly. Okay. But that's, that's literally every oh, it's, question thing. Um, it's ridiculous. I, look, I think, I think this is why I've been seeing, you know, I like the idea of preparing for the future when it's easy, yeah, okay. right? So you think of what's the worst that can happen. Okay. My business did very well because it was online during sure. COVID. Okay. It was business as usual and we had our biggest profits ever there during COVID. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We prepared Show the future. Off. No, right. I'm not showing I'm off here, but you. what I'm saying here, guys, is like think of – you have to kind of get into Boy Scout mode here. And think, sure. What's the worst thing could happen? So let, let's say if cash went, right, what would you default to? Okay. What – I'd go it, back. I'd go to Barter. Um, uh, straight away, yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be my default. Um, yeah. Obviously, crypto, I, I'm very keen on mm -hmm. um, because I see a lot of potential there. Um, yeah, they're, they're the two I would go to straight away. Yeah, so there's crypto. Um, obviously, crypto is traceable, okay? Yeah. You've got to bear that in mind mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the precious metals uh, yeah. side of thing as yeah. well, um, and, and barter is fantastic as well. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of look at it and go, all right, if that – for me personally, I'm starting to put things in place to go thinking long term ahead. If this were to happen, what yep. would I do? Sure. What would I put in place while it's easy and while supply is there as well? Mm -hmm. Because you can't assume that it will always be there readily available, right? So Damien says he likes Bitcoin as an alternative to cash. So if they do try to de 
tender or the legal tender. I don't know how you'd untender money, who but knows? if they stop using it. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin, uh, again, you yeah. have that whole thing about being traceable. Uh, Josh put it out there. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, they'll redefine cash like they did the vaccine. The right, also, so. the also thing is, guys, is that a lot of wealthy people put their money in assets rather than holding cash because mm -hmm. what you can realize inflation is eating into the value. That's of that right. Cash. That drops value. So they're looking at things like how do I buy businesses, mm -hmm. and then when whatever currency is used, then I can just accept that as uh, currency. Sure. Um, there's also other assets like land. Um, that, that the people are looking at some are into shares it, 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 it's it's uh, and i say that reluctantly because that is going to get really rocky in this month which i'm excited about from a trading perspective but for those who don't know what they're doing it you know that could be frightening it, times. it could be crazy times there yep. so you've got to look at how do i what assets are are there that are likely to increase in value in the future mm -hmm. um, because cash is actually losing money. It's yeah. actually using what it's, it's purchasing backwards. power. Yep. Now, I'm going to actually butt in something a little bit different on this one. On that, I just really want to thank everybody who is online and having these mm. conversations because this is, again, such an important part of what we're doing. Well, it's here. a people show. It is a people show. Exactly right. And, yes. and the interaction, I want to hear these questions. I want to know this needs to be interactive because this is, you know, a show for the people. Full the, stop. Yep. Loving it. There's an idea too that Travis, you bought around a year ago where <laughs> post offices could become uh, are. places where they do banking um, and that's starting to catch on a bit um, yeah. which well, has surprised me where's my royalty it's but, been around 20 years but guys, at the same on. time you know and I think post offices had, had have had to diversify yeah of course they because have. everybody's electronic now mm. email there's less need for them with the exception of delivering packages. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, they have reduced their service staff in terms of the oh, delivery yeah. rates of those I, packages. I can't remember the last time I got a letter that wasn't a bill. Like, all I get in the mail is bill and child support letters. Yeah, yeah pretty much right. me too. <laughs> I think we need to look at diversifying the way that we trade with people. I think that's mm. a very smart way. And we've always talking about a workaround. There's always a, you know, a way of working around the system to benefit us. But how do you work around the well, system? I, You've got to know the system to be able to work around good point. it. So that's why Derek's shows and his courses are really, really important because if you don't understand the oh, basics look. of it. So building the wealth foundation, Derek. Yeah. Where Thank do you, you get find out and sign up for the course? Just go to our website, blueskyfactory.com.au and book in a free 15-minute consult with myself. Blue yeah, just, just do it, honestly. Blue I have. It is worth every single penny. And what I'm also thinking how do you feel it i know you did that um the one that we recorded here that we'd normally sell for 47 dollars um the one hour one yep. how do you feel about just throwing it out to the listeners like we're just chucking the link yeah, in the chat they, and let them have they a want that and and that will benefit them then absolutely i i'd, I'd love for them to have that as well mm -hmm.